Henry's cat just couldn't get to sleep. He tried counting sheep, but one naughty sheep kept playing games, so he couldn't be counted. <coughs> oh, it would be easier to count the moon, Henry's cat thought, and got ready to count it as it passed his window. Just then, he remembered having seen people go to the moon in rockets on television, and he wondered if you caught a rocket just like you caught a bus. The next day, Henry's cat made inquiries about the moon bus and found out that it didn't pass his way. So he went to see Chris Rabbit and explained the problem to him. Oh, that's easy, said Chris. All you have to do is go up in a balloon, throw a rope round the corner of the moon and pull yourself in, just like a boat. Oh, that sounds reasonable, thought Henry's cat. Why don't we have a go at getting to the moon then? Well... Chris had an old picnic basket and some balloons left over from Christmas, and Henry's cat had some fireworks he'd saved, a red rear lamp for the basket, two large rain capes in case the moon weather was bad, and two wartime gas masks that he'd found in his grandfather's trunk. Just the sort of thing that spacemen might wear. They packed some jelly baby sandwiches, raspberry-flavoured milk, and some carrot juice pills to ward off attacks of gravity. The very next evening, they were prepared and ready to go. As soon as the moon came up, Henry's cat took command and shouted, All aboard! Cast off fore and aft! Chris cut the sandbags loose and the basket drifted slowly up towards the moon. Uh, you realise that we shall be several hours before we actually reach the moon, said Henry's cat. I thought we could uh, get some sleep. Whereupon they both got into the rain cape and closed the basket lid for warmth. After a while, Chris woke up and peering through the cracks in the bottom of the basket, saw the moon. Actually, it was the moon's reflection in a pond. But not realising this, Chris woke up Henry's cat, who believed Chris's story because the real moon had just disappeared behind a cloud. Oh, fire landing rockets, Henry's cat commanded. Sparks from the rocket burst from the balloons, and the basket oh. fell straight into the pond beneath them. They were absolutely soaked and covered in mud. Uh, we'd better put our gas masks on, said Henry's cat, in case the natives are unfriendly. Well, you can imagine. Dressed in a rain cape and gas mask and rising out of a muddy pool, they were enough to frighten anyone. Farmer Giles, who had just put his cows to bed, heard all the commotion and, wondering what was up, went outside very carefully, armed with a large pitchfork. Arr! What's all this here, then? He said challenging the strange creature with his pitchfork. Henry's cat, who had seen the situation occur many times on television, was all prepared and said, We come in peace on Big Bird from Far Land. Take us to your leader. Well, Farmer Giles was not amused and said, I know that voice. It's Henry's cat again. Out to scare my cows, is he? I'll get you for this, my lad. And he chased them all over the landscape. Come back here. Oh, things aren't always what they seem, reflected Henry's cat, as he noticed the moon was still in the sky. He noticed also his friendly little home in the distance. He rushed in, bolted the doors and peered out of the window. Farmer Giles was nowhere to be seen. Ah, oh, oh, well, distance lends enchantment, especially with farmers, he thought. And with that, he hopped into bed and under the covers and started to count sheep as fast as he could. <coughs> <coughs>